We know him as one of the rare Trojan warriors that survived the legendary war, a hero who was later considered an ancestor to Romulus and Remus, the founders of the city of Rome. But who was really Aeneas, and what's the story behind this famed defender of Troy? In this video, we go through legendary origins and early life of Prince of Dardanos. The city of Dardanos was located to the north of Troy, between the Hellespont and the foot of Mount Ida. While Strabo locates the city one mile south from the point where Hellespont begins to narrow, in Homer's time, Dardanos was situated more towards the mountain. In Greek mythology, the famed city was said to have been even older than Troy itself. It was named after its legendary eponymous founder Dardanos, an Arcadian prince that had sailed across the Aegean and eventually settled in the region, which was after him called Dardania. Several generations later, Dardanos' descendants went on to found the city of Troy to the south, making it the capital of the region, which was from then on called the Troad. From that point going forward, the extended royal family ruled both Troy and Dardanos, with the descendants of King Elos ruling over Troy, while the successors of his younger brother Asaracus, representing the junior branch of the royal house, ruled over Dardanos. Aeneas was the son of Prince Anhysus, who was in turn son of King Capis, the old ruler of Dardanos at the time of Priam at Troy. The very birth of Prince Aeneas was a result of divine intervention. As Prince Anhysus himself was a very handsome man, being said to have beauty of an immortal, he ended up attracting Aphrodite, the goddess of love. When the goddess eventually appears before Anhysus, the prince is overcome by her beauty. However, believing that the woman in front of him must be a goddess, Prince Anhysus fears the possible consequences of having an intercourse with an immortal, only to be convinced by Aphrodite that she is not a goddess, but a princess from Phrygia. After making love, Aphrodite eventually reveals her true identity, but promises Anhysus that he would be protected from any harm as long as he kept what happened a secret. Additionally, the goddess said that she would bear the Dardanian prince a child, which would be named Aeneas. Subsequently, baby prince Aeneas was born and brought by Aphrodite to Mount Ida, where he was raised by nymphs until the age of five. After turning five, the goddess brought him back to his father, to Dardanos. Anhysus, however, filled with pride, could not hold his end of the bargain, and he eventually started bragging about having a son with the goddess. As a result of this, Anhysus was struck in his leg by Zeus, causing him to be lame for the rest of his life. Young Aeneas thus grew into a fine and steadfast prince, described as eloquent, courteous, prudent, and having brown hair and black eyes. Aeneas was also a second cousin to Hector and Paris of Troy, and subsequently spent much of his childhood growing up with the Trojan royals and nobility. As Prince Hector eventually became the overall commander of the Trojan army, Aeneas rose through the ranks himself, becoming one of Hector's top lieutenants. While both Hector and Aeneas were variously described as patriots, honorable, respected nobles and defendants of their people, Prince Paris would be led by his lust and desires, and ultimately responsible for the great misfortune coming the Trojans' way. Wanting to improve relations with the Achaeans of the Greek mainland, the Trojan king Priam sent Paris to a diplomatic mission to Sparta, ruled by Menelaus, the brother of the Achaean high king Agamemnon. Upon arriving to Sparta, however, Paris ultimately caused the very opposite effect from what was he sent for. 
The Trojan prince abducted the most beautiful woman in the world, Menelaus' wife Helen, and brought her back to Troy with him. As the result of this, Agamemnon and Menelaus declared war on Troy, uniting all of Greece under their flag and pledging to burn the city of Ilion to the ground. Faced with inevitable battle for survival, the Trojans gathered their own troops and called on their allies. Prince Aeneas, together with the Dardanian nobles Archaeolochus and Acamas, was selected to command the Dardanian force, one of the five contingents of the Trojan army, under the leadership of Hector. The Trojans would also be aided by various Trachian and Phrygian allies, as well as Carians, Lycians, Mycians, Pelasgians, and many others. What was coming their way was the Achaean, 1,000 ships strong fleet, and a 10 years long war that would ultimately place everyone into the greatest legend of antiquity. The series on the heroes of the Trojan War will continue, so make sure to subscribe and click the bell button in order to be notified on the upcoming videos. Special thanks to History with Sai, Nico, Chris Ernst, Panayotis Yanopoulos, Fred Lecky, Tim Lane, Derek Wildstar, ABC Shake, Padre91, Argiris Margaritis, Huel Sally Briggs, Labelle Olmier, Winyard Illumination and Estate Care on their continuous support. If you wish to discuss and decide on the future content, feel free to join us on Patreon. This was 1XTV and we'll see you again soon.